Uh, what you have here is a more traditional one with a mat, but if you can't afford a mat, you don't necessarily need it, or because you also need a mat cutter with the mat, um, uh, you can do this, which is shadow boxing. And this is um, uh, like creating a shadow box. What this does for the artwork differently from this is the artwork is treated more like an object. It's almost like a floating object within the space. But both are actually just as professional looking. Um, in a sense, uh, they both keep the artwork off of the glass, and that's the main function of it um, uh, with the work. And, um, you know, this is basically just a simple framing job. Um, you can use an acid-free foam pour or an acid-free mat is ideal um, uh, to have for backing. Um, and what you want to do is you want to mount it to your backing, and that's what I'm showing you how to do. Alright, so here we go. Um, we want to, first thing you want to do is you want to measure it and make sure that it's um, uh, exactly how it needs to be laid out there, centered, more or less. Uh, here we've got three inches, and on there I've got three and a quarter inches, which is okay. okay. And once it looks level, perfectly straight, then you want to take a pencil and put a little dot right at the corner onto the mat board, just like that, and one over here. Just a light dot, nothing big. Because uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the, the image over, the print, and lay it and rest it exactly there at those two dots on the back side. Then you lay a strip of tape, acid-free uh, tape. Um, you can get the self-adhesive acid-free tape that's kind of easier to work with. Um, uh, make sure it's acid-free. Stick it across uh, the artwork and on the mat right there. Um, I also moved in from the, the outer edges by about an inch. You want to move in from the out. You don't want to do it right out at the outer edges because if you do, what happens is paper breathes and it, it changes size a little bit. It expands and contracts. And if you have it way out on the edges, it's going to bow in the middle of it. So usually you put it in about like at least an inch um, in close to it. And you lay the strips of tape down like that. Then you have to lay a strip of tape, another piece that's about an inch long, across. All right, and that's parallel, exactly parallel with the edge of the print and across the first piece of tape. Um, what this does is it keeps uh, gravity over time will pull the tape down on the edge and you don't want that to happen. So you, you uh, rest that tape across there and it keeps the tape from pulling down from just simply the weight of the print itself. And then you can carefully fold the print over and you should be set exactly where it should be. Look straight. Double check. Always measure three times over whatever everything you're doing. Not necessarily even twice, but three times. Yep, we're good. Okay. So then I want to make sure I erase that little dot there. Um, the kind of eraser you use, it's a little dirty because it's uh, used for artwork too, as well as it's got a lot of charcoal on it. But this is a Stettler white uh, plastic eraser, and that's, they're the best kind to actually erase with. That's my personal choice. And uh, you, you definitely want a white one because um, if you have a pink one, it's going to leave a pink smudge. They erase very clean. And neat. I also noticed there was a mark on the print, so I made sure I removed that as well. And on here, there's a little mark there too. All right, there we go. Make sure you get the eraser dust away. Okay, so that's how you do that. All right, with a free floating flame, you want to set uh, frame. You want to set the uh, glass in first uh, into the frame. So I want to go ahead and clean this. And then I want to put my, uh, put my glass in there. So normally you'd use regular window glass cleaner. I don't happen to have any. I do have some simple green, which will kind of suffice. A little bit on a paper towel, not too much. Again, just clean the side your, uh, the only side you need to worry about right away is the side that um, uh, faces the artwork. 
you can clean the other side when it's all put together. Um, unless it's a really dirty piece of glass and clean both sides. But, um, And then we set it in the back of the frame. The paper towel I had to use, it has a, little, a lot of little funkies. Alright, so with this, we want to keep the uh, artwork away from the picture. So I cut these strips out. Alright, so these are quarter inch strips of foam cord. All right. And uh, they're cut out, and they're um, one quarter, and I think I have this tape here. This is ATG tape. It's a double-sided tape. It's like a high-quality one. Um, usually, sometimes they come with, you'll see them with a the tape dispenser. Um, you can find them in the crafts, uh, scrapbooking section. Look for the ones with the brown paper cover. All right, it's got this brown, waxy paper over it, and then the tape is on the other side of it. And you want to put... Um, the ATG tape along the edges of the foam core. Uh, so the flat edges of the foam core, you lay it like this, and I do t two at a time, because this tape happens to be um, quarter, or yeah, half inch ATG tape. So I can do two of these at a time since they're only quarter inch strips. All right, and I'm running it down the edge of the strip just like that. And I tear it off the end. All right. And I take an exacto knife, and I'm going to cut uh, cut down through the stri uh, center of the strips, uh, separating them like this carefully. Um, you can kind of fold them up a little bit. That works. And I cut it while the paper's backing is still on the tape. A little easier to do that way because this stuff gets really messy when you touch it. Um, once heard it referred to as a uh, booger tape. They call it booger tape some places, I guess. Um, but uh, because it's like it's like sort of like rubber cement was it's sticky. All right. So anyway, so there we go. And then I peel the strip off. And of course, I forgot to measure it. Um, first, you want to measure your edges um, before you peel a strip off, and you want to do the top and the bottom first. All right, so um, I can do it afterwards. So I'm just going to keep doing it. And what I want to do is I want to trim these sticks to the size of the frame. So um, the inside, so I can just cut that edge off there carefully, even though I peeled the backing off. And what I'm doing is I'm placing the sticky side against the edge of the frame on the inside and down against the glass, all right? So all the way down, and then I press it up against the edge of the frame. All right, and I do that to all four sides, but what I'm doing is I'm doing the top and the bottom first because then it creates like a pillar to support the, uh, the top, and the, the top one will be supported also by the sides. So let's do the top and the bottom first. Apply that in there, just like that, pressing against the frame, and then we're going to do the sides. So I'm going to put some ATG tape on this one. If you don't find a half inch roll, you might find a quarter inch roll uh, at the store. They're, they're a little more common. The half inch rolls you have to buy from like places like Blick, Art Materials. So again, I'm laying it down, down the edge of the foam core, tearing off the end, pressing it down, separating them. Just like that. Got one and two. I'm going to measure it out just visually. What I do is, I because the sides are a little shorter, I'm going to press it into the frame right there, and it's going to create a little notch right there that I can then cut it, and then I just sort of estimate exactly what a quarter inch less because it has to fit between two strips I already laid down. 
can you visually do that? And I cut it off the back of the frame, so I'm like using the back of the frame as a cutting board. Peel that off there like that. And it should fit perfect. Try not to get too much dust in there while you're doing this. And you can see how this is resting in between those two, and that's sort of the top of it sort of acts like a pillar. Now there is a slight gap there. That's all right, just a very tiny gap and usually not noticeable. Push this one in here, do the same thing. I'm marking it off the edge of that, and then I cut like one less than a quarter of an inch thick. Trim that off, and there we go. Peel the backing off. We got all four sides. Again, resting it up in there. And pressing it up against the wall of the frame. And then, you can carefully, because I might have created some dust in there, blow out any of the dust you see in there. That's on the other side. That is too. That's good. And then I can place my artwork in there. All right, and you can see these uh, strips, they hold the glass in place. Very simple, so you can make any frame into a uh, shadow box frame. Nothing special. All right, then I put that, uh, place the, the artwork in there, kind of carefully like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and pack it up. This is square, so three on all sides. There we go. All right. So um, then, what you do is you would place your backing on here, backing paper. Now I don't have any backing paper, so I'm not really going to show you that part. Um, but you use your ATG tape, your double-sided tape, you'll lay a strip of it there carefully and then um, press it down and then peel it off and do that to all four sides and then you just take a piece of any paper, um, you can use brown paper, that's what we standardly use at a frame shop because uh, it's cheaper um, and it's also nice and heavy duty or whatever you happen to have, if you're an artist you might have a piece of drawing paper, you can use that too. Lay that over that, press it around the edges, and then trim it off on the edges. She's looking at that. All right. And then you uh, put your wire on there. The wire hanger. Um, here's what we have. This is a set. Um, you can use screw eyes, um, but this set didn't actually come with screw eyes. Instead, it came with D rings, which are actually a lot nicer. Um, you definitely don't want to use these. These are sawtooth hangers. Never put a sawtooth hanger on a picture frame this big. These things are only good for um, uh, little four by five inch pictures, uh, but anything bigger than not eight inches square, you, you don't want to put a sawtooth hanger on. They're useless. All right. The reason being is because of the weight of the glass. Um, the if you put a sawtooth on the center of this, it's all supported right there from the center of that top of the frame the entire weight of the picture. And this, this top edge of the frame ends up bowing over time, all right? By putting two, uh, putting two D-rings or uh, uh, on the sides uh, or uh, screw eyes is what I usually use um, on, on a picture this big. Uh, by putting two of those on the side of the frame, it's only supported by the side rails because the wire goes across the center and holds it up and it holds it up more evenly. All right, so you wanna do um, two thirds from the bottom or one third from the top of the frame, in which case this is 16 inches, 15 would be five. Um, so we could do about five and a quarter. That's about uh, one third from the top, two thirds from the bottom, same thing. And we wanna use this all. So we measure five and a quarter there again, right there. And then I stick my D-ring in here, and then I use an awl, that's this guy, uh, 
prison they call these a shank. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's got a little point at the end there. And um, uh, what it's used to do is to pre-make a hole for you. So it kind of helps you out by pre-pushing a hole into it. Like that, so you know exactly where your screw eye is gonna go. Um, in this case, I'm putting a D-ring on here with a, uh, with a, um, a little, um, oh, a little screw. There we go. And, uh, go to Dewalt, uh, driver. goes on like this. Okay. This is a very, very narrow frame, by the way. Because it's slightly splitting. Alright, so the D-rings face inwards, and then the wire goes across. Alright, so how the wire goes is you want to bring it um, in through to the outside. Um, imagine the ring being up like this, and then up like that. The same thing with the screw eyes. Your screw eyes will be vertically placed along the edge of the frame. Um, so it would go through the holes of the screw eyes, or through the holes of the D-rings like this, and then bring it straight up. And then what you do is you bring it underneath the wire and then straight up again and then back through from the outside to the inside. All right. And this little knot is, will actually hold any wire uh, a lot better than just simply wrapping the wire, wire around. So again, bring it straight up, bring it down underneath the wire, straight up again, and then back through from the outside to the inside. That's better than just wrapping it around the wire. And then what you do is you wrap the excess around the wire. Uh, you have definitely a better hold this way. All right, this, this wire is frayed along the edges. Um, so once you get all the way out there, I then wrap it back backwards around itself like that. Some people like to put tape on there because it is a little sharp and pointy. Um, light braided. There we go. And that's it. Usually you pull it really taut. Um, I have it a little bit loose there, but it, I would have tried to tighten that as much as I could. Alright, so then that's basically how it's finished. Alright, so the difference between this one and the other one uh, What you have here is a more traditional one with a mat. But if you can't afford a mat, you don't necessarily need it, or because you also need a mat cutter with the mat, um, uh, you can do this, which is shadow boxing. And this is um, uh, like creating a shadow box. What this does for the artwork differently from this is the artwork is treated more like an object. It's almost like a floating object within the space. But both are actually just as professional looking. Um, in a sense, uh, they both keep the artwork off of the glass, and that's the main function of it. Um, uh, with the work and um, you know this is basically just a simple framing job.